commenting on comments segment is brought to you by you, the people who comment on my videos. Today I'm responding to one comment from the video, six figure income, six pack, what women want. New video topics are every Monday and response videos daily in between. So leave a comment on the original video if you want to be part of the conversation. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molesky. This is my YouTube channel. Today we are responding to one comment and it's um, it's good because it, this video is all about me. Okay, so you can start to understand who I am and why I have the perspectives that I do. So this is from Jose Francisco da Silver e Oliveira, something like that. This is an echo of a niche of the kind of content I often get. So thank you very much for writing it. Here's his comment. Here goes. First of all, we all know you were in, perhaps still are in the food industry. Fine dining if my memory recalls. I'm guessing your income job career was massively affected by the China virus. And lo and behold, we now find you married. This isn't a coincidence. You needed resources and provisions and you did what it takes to get them. Second, preferences are only real when revealed not stated. In other words, actions over words. Women highly value looks. This is one area where I have had most of my success. Money is the most important thing in the world. It doesn't buy happiness, but without it, you literally lose your mind. Besides, that house seems pretty fancy to me. Did you buy it? <laughs> Lastly, you're not a heterosexual man. Therefore, you cannot possibly understand the nightmare of dating from our perspective. Women have a zero intellectual, social, financial, legal, moral, ethical, or religious constraints placed on them in 2021. Absolutely none. You seem like a genuine person, but it is tiring listening to women tell men what they should think and feel. Men don't have a gigantic bitch fest. We are sharing notes and collectively coming to the same painful conclusions. Women have destroyed the social contract for immediate gain. It will destroy our civilization. That's not hyperbole. Please address my comment. I want to see a response video. Aye, aye, Captain. You're acting like my husband, asking for what would make you happy from little old me. I think you would absolutely love a real wife. This is a good comment because, as I said before, it is similar to, although more specifically accusatory than, the sort of comment I regularly receive. In a portion in his fourth paragraph, he says it is tiring listening to women tell men what they should think and feel. There's a guy in the manosphere that I don't like. I say hate, but I always correct myself because I want to save my hate for the commies. But I do not, I do not like him. I don't like him. Anyway, a while back, someone did a video about him putting him on blast, just talking a lot of shit about him. And my husband and I, tuned in on YouTube to watch it for some entertainment. About a minute in, I said, God, I fucking hate this guy. And then I said, well, and not hate. I just don't, I just can't stand him. And I'm, I'm happy someone's doing this piece on him. Then I was like, wait, why? Oh no. <laughs> why am I choosing to feel disdain and watching someone say bad things about someone else? What am I doing? And then I said, can we watch something else? So while he, my husband, found something else for us to watch. I said a prayer out loud. It was something like, please help this man not be too emotionally hurt over this hit piece. Please help him find his way. Please guide him and please help him to be a good boyfriend or husband to his girlfriend or wife and vice versa. Cause I know I, I said to my husband, I, first of all, I feel way better after saying that prayer. Like saying that prayer for him made me, like took the hate away. You know, it made it, it made my, it converted my converter. It converted my energy into something, I don't know, more meaningful, okay? So the reason I tell you this story is because I wondered why I was wasting my time watching some something that pleased me in a devious way. What was I choosing to fill my head with? I should be spending my time bettering myself, learning, watching more wholesome things, watching about how to be a better wife. I mean, seriously, there's so many other things I could have done. So with that revelation being said, <clears throat> in your comment, you said you seem like a genuine person, but it is tiring listening to women tell men what they should think and feel. I respect your free speech to tell me that I'm tiring. 
But I have to wonder, and I wonder if you've ever wondered, I have to wonder why are you and so many men tuning in to listen to anyone who makes videos that you don't agree with or are become tired by? Why would you spend your energy on the click? You interpret my videos as telling you how you, you should think and feel and you don't like it. Yet there you are at Monday's video. Why? Why? And you are here watching a video, get this, you're watching a video that you requested because you wanted to get my thoughts and feelings. If I could cross my eyes right now, I would because it would <laughs> it drive home the point. Why are you wasting your precious deathbed life? You're gonna fucking die. Why are you wasting your precious time listening to someone who is not a heterosexual male, man? Someone who cannot possibly understand the nightmare of dating from your perspective. Well, the truth is only you can understand your perspective. I wonder, I wonder how you feel about the men, men, heterosexual men who have a different opinion and focus on different data than you. Would that be tiring to listen to? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Who cares? I, I get it. I can't understand your dilemma. I, but I have a brain and I can think through it and imagine, and I think I do a pretty good job. So when women have zero intellectual, social, financial, legal, moral, ethical, religious constraints, placing them in 2021 on 20 in 2021, why tune in? I mean, I like it, but I don't get it. Do you or any of you really think that I'm telling you what to think? The purpose of my channel, the purpose of my channel is to give you perspective because I like hearing different perspectives. <clears throat> when I hear a perspective, I can practically see a new neural connector being born and fusing with all my other ideas and thoughts. And I don't necessarily love the perspective, but I like that it's added to my database, my unique soup of possibilities. I don't care if you never get married and I know that it's shitty out there and you could get divorced. That's why I say, gentlemen, if you choose to get married, get a prenup, get a prenup. We learned in the interview that we did with the lead attorney all about prenups and that they work, which leads me to men aren't having a gigantic bitch fest. We are sharing notes and collectively coming to the same painful conclusions. Women have destroyed the social contract for immediate gain. It will destroy our civilization. That's not hyperbole. I agree and I don't. I'll say this. I would hate being a dude. I'd hate being a woman dating right now, but I would hate being a dude in the present day. I do think that feminism has been an emotional gateway drug that has created a perfect way of smuggling in additional mindsets that will destroy America. Feminism is going to kill America. I agree, but I'm a woman. Is it tiring when I agree with you? Or is it tiring when I disagree with you? And I do agree that you are sharing notes and coming to painful conclusions, but I do think it's emotional fed rather than facts. And I do see it as a bitch fest, but it's entertaining, right? So let me clarify. I just mentioned my interview with the YouTuber known as the lead attorney. Awesome dude, awesome channel. He told us all the do's and don'ts with a prenup. He told us that they really do work when they are done correctly. And he gave parameters on what it means to be done correctly. He's an attorney. He's a divorce attorney with 20 years experience. Does that count for anything? I had people in the comment section of that video that um, the interview that I did for him negating his knowledge. None of them spoke from personal experience. It sounded like the facts they were giving were facts that they had got secondhand from anecdotal evidence in one of the note sharing sessions. No, it doesn't work. You don't understand. You will get screwed over. It's not worth it. Again, if it's not worth it to you, there's nobody that could change your mind. It doesn't matter. But I bet many of you had an emotional response to my mentioning that prenups work just a minute ago. I bet that there are some viewers who get angry that the lead attorney said that prenups can work. He came with notes. Would they be welcomed? What about other men, as I mentioned before, who have had success in marriage or had sex success in divorce? What about men who used a prenup and that prenup held up? I've seen the comment section of those note sharing communities. And I know that when someone comes in with a fact or an experience that's not of the mob think they're fucking slaughtered. They are not welcome. It's as if 
someone had said Fox News is right ever Fox News is right about everything and they did it in a CNN comment section. No. No. The painful truth is that CNN viewers think that Fox News viewers are ding-dongs and vice versa. Real. Everyone's fighting everyone. I do understand that many judges are sexist and are hard on men and sympathetic to women and that and that sexism from a person in a powerful position can devastate a man's life. I agree it's bullshit. I do not like it. I don't think it's fair. I think it's... I would vote to have it changed. I would vote to have it change. I would also not vote. I'd let my husband do it. You can take away my vote. I don't care. But I also believe in freedom and I'm an anarchist, but I don't believe in democracy. Ah! Don't negate everything I say just because I'm an anarchist, okay? I believe in freedom, freedom, personal freedom. And this isn't your comment, but I've gotten it plenty of times. Like, yeah, shut up, bitch. You gotta change the law. Or, yeah, you might hate it, but you still profit from it. Okay. Should I kill myself? Should I kill myself because I was born in a society that has, has laws currently that are skewed towards... Uh, the benefit of women or should I just not use that system and be do the right thing I'm gonna go with B okay let's go again to paragraph one first of all we all know you were in perhaps still are in the food industry fine dining if memory recalls yes that is a good memory I'm guessing your income job career was massively affected by the China virus and lo and behold we now find you married <laughs> That isn't a coincidence. You needed resources and provisions and you did what it takes to get them. Really? So what was that paragraph? What was that paragraph? It was you, the commenter, I know you're watching this. It was you being the exact person that you claim I am, but with a little more oomph. It is tiring listening to women tell men what they should, should think and feel. Instead, you didn't tell me a should, you told me what I have done, what my actions were. That's ballsy. If you had to put money down on how correct you are, how much money would you put down? If you had to back up your the claim that you made, would you put thousands down, 10,000s? Are you so confident that you would put your house up? Or when you really think about it, would you put like $5 in, okay? If it's your house, then I think that comment is great because wow, you really have conviction. If it's five bucks, then I think that that was a really stupid thing to say. The comment was said in a way that it was fact. And I'd like to know what other facts you have about me. What else have I done? Or what else do you think I've done based on the note taking? I know I'm being kind of farty to you, but it was super unfair. Why doesn't anybody ask questions? You know, I got in a little tiff a while ago with a, with a Facebook hardcore left Critical race theory, we have to raise our children to, to focus on race and shit like that. And because I didn't agree with them, they called me a right-wing extremist and that I must have a trust fund. Like, where do you even get that? But I'm right here. Why didn't they ask me, hey, are you right-wing? Or are you a trust fund baby? Like, where do you even draw these conclusions? Out of the note-taking session. I want my note sessions to be not what you're used to. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm not evading the question. Yes, I have been in fine dining since about 2005. And yes, coronavirus affected every business that didn't have the power, the money, to have government officials in their pocket. But here's what really happened. Here's my real story about how I met my husband and why I chose him, because he had gobs of money. Okay, I worked at a restaurant that used to be open four days a week, except for three months of the year, we were open seven days a week. At the most I ever worked was five days a week and in the summer, I'm sorry, in the summer, five days a week and in the winter, four days a week. But he changed that. We were only open four days a week, period. He changed everyone's schedule. So everyone worked three shifts a week. So I worked Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And maybe because I worked so little, I really needed the money and that's why I found a husband. I know you didn't say that, but I've been accused of that too. So for those of you who are wondering, I always say get into fine dining. I worked three nights a week, you know, or four nights before. No, wait, five. It doesn't matter. I worked about six hours a shift and a bad night, a bad night was 200 bucks. An average you could expect 400 and a high average was 800. 
that was that was a good night. Great nights for like a, a thousand plus. So three nights a week, what I worked, and that's when I met my now husband. I'm gonna go to paragraph two of his. Second, preferences are only real when revealed, not stated. In other words, actions over words. Women highly value looks. This is one area where I have had most my success. Money is the most important thing in the world. It doesn't buy happiness, but without it, one literally loses their mind. So he's saying looks and money, looks and money. You're saying that you had your success in the looks department. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe, maybe, maybe you have been dating based on getting women, on the way that getting women works for you, which is looks. A woman who, f who freaking dates you for your looks is not the right woman. It's the woman that's gonna hurt you and make you upset and make you go to a note sharing YouTube channel to talk about how women are like that. Listen, women can be farts. So can dudes, but we're talking about women. Women can be farts and the law lets them, but there is a way to pick them. If you don't want to pick one, if you want to stay single, that's fine. That's fine. But if all you have is looks and if all you have is looks and money, you're not going to, it's not a great relationship. What, what are you bringing? You know, here's some money. Look at my face. It's just as stupid as a woman just focusing on her on her face. You know, look at my face. While I'm a bitch to you and spend all your money and talk shit about you and don't help around the house. Come on. Come on, man. All right. So, look some money. Okay, so I met my husband online on Bumble. Bumble is you have to match, but then the woman has to make the first move. And I know a lot of you are like way anti... Um, Online dating, I'm not. And I've said that numerous times. I'm absolutely not against online dating. I'm against how people are picking people on online dating, okay? And if, you are, if you're interested in hearing me talk about how to do it, how to write a bio, how to filter, write the number one down below and I'll, and I'll do that. I, dude, I can help you. I can help you find a good, a good woman. At least I can help you vet them and then you can do the rest. Okay, anyway, I chose my husband. Was it because of his looks? No, here's why. I had a, a couple rules. One of the rules for online dating was that if they did not have a written profile, I wouldn't swipe. Doesn't matter what they look like, doesn't matter. Profile, written. And then second to that was if I didn't like what they had written and I would, I would not look at their face, what did they write? If I liked what they wrote, yes. If I didn't like what they wrote, no. All right, so his profile was okay. Uh, there was, <laughs> it was fine, but there was one thing that made me like him. <laughs> On Bumble, there are questions that you can answer as a way for people to get to know you better, your personality. And the question was beach or mountains? I prefer beach, but I didn't answer this question. He did. So um, uh, He said mountains, I hate the beach. <laughs> We should fill it with plastic. And I loved it. I loved it. First of all, I prefer the beach. <laughs> but if he really, like if he was if he was kidding, for some reason I just really like that. And if he wasn't kidding, who is this guy? Why does he hate the beach so much? Boom, swipe. His, his pictures, wasn't into. Not my type. Not my type at all. But he wanted to fill the beach with plastic. That's vibin'. All right, so once we connected, our texting banter began. No, I do this annoying thing where I volley pieces of material to, to someone that should and could be used as an opening for comedy. But in my head, I'll, like, I'll volley the comedic material to them, and then I'll think of what a really good comeback would be. And most of the time, people either like just let it fall flat or they kind of uh, volley it weekly back. At least they're trying, right? But he didn't do that. I would volley him things and he came up with stuff that was funnier than I had prepared, that I had thought of, one that I haven't even considered. And it was like every time he did that, I, my heart opened up more, more, more. And I was so pleased, I was so pleased. To find someone who was funny and authentic and interesting and was amazing, <sighs> 
There was something else that I didn't mention in, in Monday's video. Oh, another reason why I liked him so much. We had downloaded a lot of the same data. So what do I mean? We had watched, seen, read, listened to, and considered many of the same things, okay? So we had the same cookies and malware on our hard drive, and we both were interested in finding the antidote to delete the, the icky cookies and malware off our hard drive and to delve in deeper to the good, the good software. We were jiving. I've said this a lot on my channel that I knew, I thought that he'd be my husband. Okay, so I've told this story a lot on this channel, but I, I had a roommate. Now, no, Jose Francisco da Silva e Elevera, something like that. I actually didn't need the money. I didn't have roommates to get their money and I didn't have sex with them or kiss them or anything, okay? So after I lived in my house for a short time, I had a friend who I really liked who went on a trip to visit his family for kind of a long time. And before he left for the trip, we had had conversations about how he was living with his parents and it wasn't good for him. Like there was a million reasons that he shouldn't be living with his parents at his age. Well, he needed a ride home from the airport, so he contacted me and said, hey, can you pick me up on so-and-so date? Yeah, I only work three days a week. So I picked him up and we're talking about his trip, and he said, you know, I really been thinking that I shouldn't be living with my parents and I don't like it. Can I move in with you? I said, yeah. So we just went home. We just drove from the airport to my house. We, I had, I had an extra bed. It was fine. So he just moved in and, and that was really great. We only had seven people at our wedding, but uncle was one of them. My second roommate was a friend um, who had was going through a shitty divorce. And then on top of that had a shitty roommate living situation, like really bad. So I said, hey, you know, uncle moved out. Do you want to move in? And he did. And it was great. And that second roommate was the officiant of our wedding. These are good friends of the family. But anyway, I tell you all this because when my second roommate walked in, I said, dude, I think I'm gonna marry this guy. He's like, okay, <laughs> I don't care. I finally met my husband. And like I said, he was not my physical type and meeting him confirmed it, confirmed it. So on top of him not being my type, he was two inches shorter than I was. And I know a lot of you are really pissed off that women want taller. So why did I want taller? I'll tell you personally, I got held back in first grade, which was the best thing that ever happened to me. But I'm a tall woman right now. I'm almost five foot 10. So when I was a little girl, I was really tall. Now, now you hold me back and I'm with younger kids. So I was the tallest kid, boy or girl, until fifth grade. So I was made fun of a lot. So I think that there's a little bit of that left over. Like I'm, you know, I'm old, at the, I'm 43. So I'm, I'm fine with being tall. And there was a lot of guys that didn't want to date me because of my height. So who cares, right? But anyway, I had been made fun of. And then the other thing is women want to be, women want to know that they're protected, that their man can protect them. And they want to be manhandled. But the good news for everyone is that short men can do that. That's another message I have for women. Don't worry about the height, really. So anyway, you see, he he doesn't look how I thought that my forever guy would look. But here's the thing, I knew I had that feminine superpower that I talked about in that video. I knew that. I knew that if I was right about our suitability, he would become my type. Meaning, I knew that I would find him, I knew that he would be the most attractive man in the world if we were suitable. And that's why I made Monday's video. And that's honestly why I make most every single one of my videos. If it's about love or a woman's role, it was a hundred percent. It was motivated by the reality that I'm in because of my husband. I look at my husband and these emotions come over me. And the, I know that they're the best ones. And I know that women can have them. So I want every woman to feel those emotions and I want every man to reap the rewards of those emotions. That's why I'm on YouTube. Also, I hate feminism. Feminism tells women that they can't have what I have and they shouldn't. It's, it's not that kind of world anymore. Men are stupid at best and will hurt you at worst. The men groups who share notes 
tell the same sentiment. No, gentlemen, you cannot have a good relationship because women are useless at best and will hurt you at worst. I just come around on YouTube and say, hey, if I can have it, so can you. And if you want it, let me try to help you. It's like that annoying uh, thing that millionaires do. If I can make it, if I can make a ton of money, so can you. But most people think that wealth is out of their reach or it's too risky or they love their life just the way it is. They're comfortable with the money they have. They don't need any more money to be happy. Maybe they've learned that, that money just brings misery and, and cheap women and everything bad in life. But what I've seen is that the, their great life and their comfort, that that turns into animosity and hate for the wealthy. The rich people who try to give the people who aren't rich some hope, oof, the worst of the worst. I, I bridge the two because I've been accused of being a shitty person and that I should give up my channel because I bring people hope. <laughs> what a world. All right, getting back to the guy. That wasn't my type. He was a gamer at the time. He wasn't loaded. He was a normal dude. He owned a house, he paid his bills. He raised a daughter on his own. Okay, and that's something else. I didn't wanna be a mom and I wasn't interested in being a mom. But I thought, you know what? If this superpower that I suspect I have kicks in, I bet that'll probably change too. I thought when you meet your soulmate, he might not look how you thought he was gonna look and he might come with a daughter. Dude. When you find the right person and you pick them and they pick you, it's a game changer. And thank God, as I always say, <laughs> my prediction was right because I, I was correct. I did fall in love with him. I will die for him. I love him. I respect him. He makes me feel useful and he understands me and I understand him and he likes my cooking and he lets me pamper him and I get to interrupt his day like a thousand times to tell him that I love him and ask him if he needs anything. <sighs> and I'd follow him anywhere. He's the boss. He knows that. I'll do anything. He's a good boss though. Ah, he's good. Okay. Oh, and, and I ended up being, I ended up liking being a fake mom. I take that job really seriously. It is my job to raise her to be the best woman that she can be. So when I met him, he was doing fine, but he wasn't killing it and I didn't care. So here we are, no looks, no money. And I told him all these feelings and he wasn't butthurt. He didn't gripe or whine and he wasn't pissed. He had confidence. He was stoic about the thing. He could take me or leave me, didn't matter. And that was really hot. Hmm. I used to have a meetup, which I've talked about, free thinkers and truth seekers, and he started attending that. And at the meetup, he was revealing and honest and captivating. He was a natural leader. In yesterday's video, we talked about people who waste their time before they meet the person that they would actually want to be with. And, and that's really bad because when they, when they meet the person they want to be with, they've wasted their time and they haven't become the kind of person that the kind of person they're interested in wants to be with. Well, my husband lived his life for himself and did what he was interested in. He was a medic for first infantry, so he saw a lot of gore and he saved a lot of lives and a lot of limbs. So what's that? Stoic. He was a dual firefighter and paramedic in LA. What's that? Sexy, because that's more evidence of his leadership. That's a man I wanna follow. He used to be addicted to meth and has been sober for years. That, to me, is a man that can overcome. I've said before, a man that has slayed dragons already. That's the guy you wanna follow. So, short ex status meth head is my soulmate. Proud, I am proud of him. He wasted no time soaking up life and had accomplished so much by the time that I met him. How could I possibly not fall in love with this guy? You'd fall in love with him too. But I'm not, I'm not selfish, I'm not jealous. <laughs> Like, oh, we were together forever. You, I, you could be a supermodel with a bajillion dollars and huge boobs and I know he'd stay with me because I treat him so good. So we got engaged before Corona and right around that time, I got bumped at work to one day a week, okay? And I told him that and he's like, well, that was the goal anyway, so it might as well happen now. And he said, I, I, I wanna have you home full time. I don't want you to work. 
And although we held the same views about gender roles, it was still really foreign to me. I had always been the breadwinner in every relationship I've ever had. So when he said that, that he would love for me to stay home, it, it was still surprising. Like, really? Are you sh really? So like, I can stay home and like do the things around the house and, and homeschool Mary and cook for you and like can if I want and plant flowers and stuff, really? And he said yes, and that was crazy. Okay, so I, th I think I'm one day a week, or maybe I'd quit by then. We'll say, I, we'll say I was one day a week. We got married three months after coronavirus started. Oh my God. You have basically accused me of freaking out about coronavirus and just finding a successful man who would support me, okay? But there's a couple problems with your assumptions. First of all, they're rude, they're bad faith, but, but anyway, here's the problem. All right, problem. Problem one, I'm post wall. I'm post wall. I got them rinkies that you can't see because the lighting is really bright. And my elasticity is being lost here. Okay? So I'm well past the wall when I met my husband. And according to the note sharing community, I could not be attractive enough to find a guy who would have sex with me, let alone marry me, let alone the kind of guy that has resources, there's no way. So how could I have gone out in a panic and competed using my sexual market value in the open market for the kind of guy who would make my life financially safe? A man who would marry me. My sexual market value is all but dead. And it's the man that chooses to marry, not the wife. It is in the man's control, not mine. So do you really think that I could go out there and find what you accuse me of looking for? I don't know. You know what? I probably, not, not according to the, the note community, but the truth is I, I probably could have if that was important to me, but it's not. And that's why I talk to women about what is important. You should choose based on what is important and you will end up winning, winning in life. Because the true story is that I married him because he was right for me. He married me because I was right for him. In me, he found a woman who, who he found attractive, who dotes on him and thinks highly of him and respects him and smiles whenever she sees him and whenever he walks into a room and always says, do you need anything? And is trying to anticipate his needs. That's who he married. He's my soulmate. And I know I, that is so tacky and sappy but we are absolutely made for each other. And then what happened after we got married was like all bonus. It was like a blessing for doing the right thing and choosing the right person. So my husband and I discussed your comments and we know some of the talking points in the, in the note sharing community. And he said that many men just find it as a, a business contract that they'll get fucked up in, right? So he says, if marriage is just a business contract, our business is thriving. Let's get back to one day a week after we got married. One day he finally said to me, enough is enough. Even working, even you leaving the house once a week is too much. It's not worth it. I want you home all the time. So please quit. So I did. After that, do you know what happened? In one year, in one year, how do I say? In one year, he's boosted his earnings over 10 times. Like, what's it? What is that? What, how do you say that? Like 10 times. Like if he made a dollar, then he'd make $10 because it'd be double, double, double. Is that? No, 10 times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. 10 times. Okay. Why did this happen? Two reasons. He loves what he does and he believes in it. He likes providing for his family. And he says that he finally had the time to devote to doing what he liked in life, which is making money. And I fill in the gaps. Huh, we benefit each other. Just like it was before feminism when men had time to build up the world and were justly compensated for the honor of doing so. And they made enough money to create a kingdom at home. And when they got home, they were greeted by a family that was happy to see him and a wife that respected him and made it her job to see that he was treated like a king. It's old school. So what I saw in my husband in the beginning was humor, stoicism and leadership. And now I have looks, money, money leads to being a hub and to acquire all those, the dude's smart. 
So by using my feminine superpower and being attracted to those seven things and not depending on looks and money, I ended up with a man who has everything I could want. Beat that. I would like to add that it's a, if it's a business contract that women can pull out of and take half of everything, should I do? Would you expect me to do what all women do? I mean, you thought that I got married because of <laughs> a nail biter about coronavirus. So I just found a dude with money. So like, should I divorce him now? Do I have to? Because I don't want to. I just want to be with him. I don't want to be without him. Which takes me to what I say to the men who tell me that I have to change the laws. Like I shouldn't be married, I should be out. I don't even know how I would do it. But no, I'm not gonna do that. I can't do that. I can't change the laws, but I'll do what I can. So I come on here and I make these YouTube videos hoping that they'll influence at least one woman out there, influence her to be a great wife for a great man. It doesn't matter what the laws are. I'm not gonna screw anyone over, especially my husband. Oh, and the, the last thing. Besides that, the house seems pretty fancy to me. Did you buy it? I'm curious why you're asking all these really personal questions. I think you're trying to zing me. Like, oh shit, I've been exposed for using my husband for his money. <gasps> the house is awesome. And here, here's a little piece of, of information that you shouldn't get from a woman. Real estate's really important. You know what's crazy about buying a bunch of land and a rad house out in the middle of nowhere is it's way more affordable than buying a house in an up and coming neighborhood in downtown Colorado Springs. So I bought my house four years ago and I just sold it for a little less than double. Okay, that's pretty good. But did I buy this house? No, there's no way he would have let me do that. And that probably doesn't compute to you because that seems wrong. It's just pre-feminism. I spend the money that I made on that stupid house for the things that I'm into. Crypto, food, decorating, canning supplies, books, homeschooling material, more chainsaws, sausage stuffers, seeds, a lot of seeds, trees, stuff like that. Stuff for the family. I cut my own hair and I have dirt under my nails way too often. I don't get manicures. I have more wrinkles and less elasticity and the only reason that bothers me is because my husband deserves perfection. I live in the country. The only reason that I wear makeup and dresses is to please my husband. My husband is perfect and it pains me that not everyone in the world knows it because if they did know it, he'd be treated like a king everywhere and that would make me smile. But the fact is nobody knows except for me. And that is why it is my job in this life to make sure that he is looked after in a way a wife looks after her husband. I teach our daughter how important daddy is and that he deserves our respect always. She helps me cook his favorite recipes and I teach her how to anticipate the needs of him and therefore of others, how to be helpful in life and how to make him comfortable when he's around. I often tell her that when she's a woman, her most important decision will be to pick a husband because she'll be with him forever and that's good because that means she'll create a strong family. I tell her she might, she might find a handsome man, but that's not all she's looking for. That's just, that's just an aside. Finding a great husband has nothing to do with looks. I teach her that one day she will find a special man and be the wife and mom. It'll be her turn to feel the love and joy of family and the weight of responsibility that is an honor to bear and naturally comes with being a woman. <sighs> Thanks. I gotta clean now. <laughs> Bye. You seem like a genuine person, but it is tiring listening to women tell men what they should think and feel. So she know. I put, I stuff her Kong with hot dogs and then she throws the Kong and has to like get the hot dog out. So it's boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom, boom.